Hey everyone, this is Coach Rory Moynihan, and you're listening to another episode of Up Tempo Talks, brought to you by Runners Connect. Today's topic is regarding running streaks and setting annual mileage goals, which is probably going to be a pretty common occurrence uh, with many runners, especially as we approach a new year. Now, the point of today's podcast or video is to actually convince you why I don't think this is the best option in terms of goal setting, and I'm going to provide some alternative options that I think are better and are going to help make you a better runner. First, let's talk about the pros of a running streak or annual mileage goal. Typically, a running streak refers to running one mile or more per day, as long as you possibly can. This can be for weeks, months, or even years. Uh, In terms of the annual mileage goal, typically runners will pick a number that they try to hit over the course of a year. Uh, One common example I hear, for instance, with 2021 coming up, uh, a runner might try to run 2,021 miles. So there are some pros of these types of goals. I think they can be highly motivating, especially during a time like COVID and amidst a pandemic. It can be something to just get you out of bed in the morning, and it gives you kind of a daily daily purpose uh, to your run. There's definitely a sense of accomplishment that comes with it, and even recognition. Um, You know, I see a lot of people post about their running streaks and mileage goals online. You see other runners doing it. You can kind of commiserate and check in with friends who are doing the same thing. So yeah, I I think it makes it sort of fun, and especially with the the Strava recap, if you're subscribed to the Strava app. uh, Yeah, basically at the end of each year, I think you have to pay for this feature now, but they'll give you all your stats on on the year and they'll tell you how many miles you ran how many days you ran that year so yeah it's kind of cool to post that as the year winds down and just feel really good about it in terms of the running streak I don't think it's a bad idea for new runners who maybe want to get used to the idea of running frequently so doing one mile a day to start off you know isn't going to be too damaging in terms of recovery most people are able to get it done and uh, yeah, you're going to see some, some major fitness gains if you have not been running for very long. The annual mileage goal is a little better, in my opinion, than, say, a running streak because it allows some more flexibility. You can adjust throughout the year if things come up and people are more likely to take a day off when needed. Now, going back to the running streak, or I guess both, um, You know, I think there are some valid reasons why people do it. Uh, It can take on a personal personal significance. You know, I have friends who, you know, embark on running streaks because they have overcome cancer or they're a recovering addict. And, you know, it kind of marks all the days that they've been sober. Or perhaps they're trying to hit a certain number of mileage or miles on the year to to support a charity or a good cause. So I think those are some great reasons to do it. Now, if you're just trying to, uh, you know, do these streaks or hit the annual mileage goal to kind of brag to friends or just say you did it, I I think that's problematic and could lead to injury and uh, some other negative setbacks. So I want to transition to talking about the cons of these types of challenges, and then I'll give you some alternatives for goal setting in the year 2021. Okay, the number one reason I would say you should not aim for a mileage goal or try to do a running streak is if you are trying to get faster or run a PR or a specific time at a distance. Uh, the, the main reason would be these types of challenges are going to inhibit your recovery because oftentimes you feel like you're kind of forced or obligated to run when you don't need to. Uh, yeah, and the, the recovery is going to get in the way of those harder sessions that you need to do if you're training to, say, run a really fast 5K or you want to run a Boston qualifying time. So again, if you've been running for a while, I, I don't think it's good to tie your hands uh, with this type of goal because, yeah, it's more likely to lead to injury. That would probably be the, the second biggest reason not to do it. Uh, I've seen a lot of runners, you know, just kind of break down from these types of things because they're trying to hit a certain number for the week or just get out for their run during the day. You know, they're, I don't know, running in the middle of the night. They're not sleeping, but they still feel like they have to get it done and they end up getting hurt or just burnt out as a result. In addition, that's going to create really a negative association with regards to running, which is not good. I mean, hopefully you run uh, because you enjoy it to some extent, 
And yeah, burnout is another thing that I see happening because of these types of challenges. Another downside is that as you approach the end of the year, if you don't hit your mileage goal, or perhaps you finally have to take that day off ending your streak, you feel a a big sense of failure because you're kind of holding yourself to such a high standard and placing so much pressure on yourself when really it's not warranted because you are probably doing a tremendous amount of work. Uh, I'm guessing your fitness has even improved, yet because of the way the challenge was sort of set up, you're feeling like a failure. In addition, this goes back to the first point that I mentioned about training for a specific distance or trying to get faster. If you are tied to a weekly number or daily number or just trying to get out the door every day, you're less likely to go with the flow of a training block or like the racing season. So so when races are happening, uh, yeah, you might not partake in a taper that you really need to feel ready for that race because you feel like, oh, I'm just going to tack on a mile or two here so I don't fall behind on my goal. Or, you know, if there's a day where you could really benefit from a complete rest day or cross training, you might skip that and just try to log your mile or two for the day. And yeah, that can actually take off the edge when it comes to race day. Of course, some people also tend to start off the year way too hard uh, as they calculate all the numbers they need to hit for, say, that annual goal, and they can end up getting hurt early on. Or perhaps something comes up in the first part of the year, and as they get closer to, you know, December 31st, they realize, oh, I have to cram and get all these miles in, and they end up getting hurt at the end of the year. So I think I've kind of exhausted the pros and what I'd say are a lot more cons for doing these types of challenges. So I'd like to end by giving you some alternative options for goal setting to ensure that you have a more productive 2021, you stay healthier, and actually accomplish more in terms of running PRs and just setting personal running goals. So first off, If you're thinking about the running streak or that appeals to you, I highly encourage you to start with something like running five to six times a week. Let's say you're only running three to four times per week. That's going to be a huge jump to try to make yourself run every day. And then again, I think it's bad because it it just boxes you in. So it's also going to give you flexibility with real life circumstances and not feel that sense of letting yourself down because, oh, you know, I only ran six times this week. So again, when you give yourself that wiggle room of five to six days, you can uh, adjust as needed. And I actually think you're going to get more out of training as you feel fresher for these workouts and can kind of move, uh, move that rest day around as needed as, you know, maybe different life events take place. Now, if you like to run consecutive days, maybe for a week or two straight, I still encourage you to plug in a rest day like every other week or monthly, as I think it's going to allow you to get more out of your training and just feel a little bit fresher uh, mentally and physically. In fact, one thing that I've used that works pretty well, I do like to measure my training in terms of weekly mileage. So if I'm doing a marathon block and I really want to feel fit by hitting, say, 90 to 100 miles a week, I do not feel very good when I run those weeks back to back to back. So what I do is I take a rest day every eighth day, um, and then it allows me to still measure my miles over the span of seven days. Next up, rather than doing the streak or just trying to hit a number, I challenge you to pick a bold race distance that maybe you haven't done before. It could be a half marathon, marathon. Maybe you even want to explore 50K or the ultra distances, or perhaps you want to go down and test yourself, see how fast you are by doing something like a mild time trial. But these types of goals um, can be adjusted. You can, you know, run some of these races multiple times a year or make multiple attempts and kind of shift them around as needed. And I think these goals are better because you're not going to become so boxed in by uh, hitting a specific number. Now, I'd like to point out you don't always need to be super focused on the time. So yeah, it's great to go after, say, a sub three hour marathon, but also set other goals related to this target race that you have chosen for 2021. It could be something like course, running running a PR is great. Uh, you could look at perhaps age graded performances and see how you stack up against other runners in your age group. If you're at a race, it's kind of fun to go f- 
for those age group awards and maybe try to get on the podium. Or another thing that works well, especially if you're running a course that's not PR friendly, maybe it's a trail race. Perhaps you can look back at past results and you know see what kinds of times um, put you in the the first half of the race. And then your goal could be just to beat you know over half the runners and be in that top half of the race. I really like uh, challenging yourself with those types of goals as they can be more realistic and, and feasible depending on the situation. Now, finally, I urge you to set non-quantifiable goals. This is something I urge my runners to do when heading into any race. I always want them to have secondary goals that don't necessarily relate to running a specific time. So this can be applied to the larger picture with your training for the full year. So for instance, this could be maybe changing your uh, mental approach or your mindset. So if you kind of fear workouts and get anxious about them and maybe bail mid-workout because you don't hit your times, maybe you want to focus on combating this by every time you have that negative thought or want to stop. You actually recall a really good workout that you had previously and you just kind of create that mental picture. Think back to that workout where you were hitting the times you wanted. Think about how maybe you felt then, what scenery you were seeing, and then see if you can kind of bring yourself back into that positive mindset to to get the most out of your workouts, or it can even be a race situation, right? When you start to feel like you're in that tough spot in a race, recall the good workouts that you've had that helped prepare you for that moment. Next, if you've been kind of hesitant about speed workouts, you could kind of just make it your promise or commitment to hit the track more for speed sessions, uh, just to put you in that mindset to be able to run faster and get more out of those workouts. Maybe you are a road warrior and kind of just stick to your same neighborhood routes. You could try to commit to running trails more often, or maybe you want to choose a monthly destination and run somewhere new if you're kind of feeling stuck in that same routine. I think that can really add some nice spice to training by just running in a new location. Anyway, I hope I've provided you some new ideas for goal setting in the new year. I think these are going to be better ways to get the most out of your running, and I think you'll actually feel more accomplished than if you come up short and you know don't hit the mileage goal or you have to end your running streak because you'll actually feel better just knowing that you you know ran your your PR or you ran your best virtual race of 2021 or maybe you have that age group award medal you know hanging up on the wall and you can just look back at that and, and know you worked really hard or it may even be that you committed to running in new places every month and you can scroll back through your photos uh, revisit your your mental library and just know you ran in some really cool locations. So thanks for listening to another episode of Up Tempo Talks. I've, I'd love to hear what kind of goals you're setting for yourself in 2021. Tell me about it in the comments below or uh, send me an email at rory at runnersconnect.net. Finally, I'd like to wish you a happy and healthy 2021. And until next time, have a great run today, guys. Mm-hmm.